Barack Hussein Obama is now the first American president ever to come out in favor of same-sex marriage. In an interview last week with ABC, Obama broke with the traditional view of marriage between a man and a woman by affirming that marital unions between those of the same sex should be allowed. An historic interview hours ago, President Obama speaking exclusively to ABC's Robin Roberts and announcing something no U.S. president has ever said, that he supports same-sex marriage. I've always been adamant that gay and lesbian Americans should be treated fairly and equally. And I was sensitive to the fact that for a lot of people, you know, the, the word marriage was something that evokes very powerful traditions, religious beliefs, and so forth. But I have to tell you that uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Now, some are saying that Obama's support of gay marriage is due to his own homosexual leanings, but no solid evidence for this has been produced. For instance, in honor of Gay Pride Month in June of 2009, Obama invited gay leaders to the White House, to whom he declared, I will be your champion, who will fight both with you and for you. But this, including Obama's intimate embrace of one of the homosexual leaders, and even early photos of Barack in his youth, is uncertain proof that Obama is gay himself. Yes, at the meeting, Obama did confirm that he asked Congress to repeal the long-standing Defense of Marriage Act, which traditionally defines how local, state, and federal bodies are to recognize partnerships and determine benefits, yet this still proves nothing. But there is credible evidence attesting to Obama's same-sex past from a very persuasive witness, a Larry Sinclair, who's been very public about it too. In his book, Obama and Sinclair, Cocaine, Sex, Lies and Murder, Sinclair describes how in November of 1999 in Chicago, he personally engaged in sexual activity with Obama in the back of a limousine and later in his hotel room. Notably, on June 18, 2008, before a large crowd at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Sinclair disclosed in a very believable testimony significant details of the homosexual liaison that took place between himself and Obama in 1999. In regards to the Obama incident, I flew out of Colorado Springs, Colorado to Chicago on November 2, 1999 arriving in O'Hare early in the morning of November 3rd. I made reservations at the Comfort Inn and Suites in Gurney, Illinois, based solely on the location to the training center. On November 5th, 1999, I hired the services of Five Star Limousine. On November 6, 1999, I asked the limo driver, whose name I now reveal for the first time, Jagir Paramit Mutani, if he knew anyone who would like to socialize and show me Chicago. Mr. Mutani said he knew someone who was a friend of his. On November 6, 1999, after picking me up at the hotel in Gurney, and this is significant, Mr. Mutani used his cell phone to make a call. That call was made to then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama to set up an introduction between myself and Senator Obama. Upon arriving at the bar and exiting the limo, Senator Obama was standing next to Mr. Mutani, and I was introduced to Senator Obama by name. Later that evening in a bar which I believe was called Alibis. And I state believe because I have failed so far to get Citigroup to provide the credit card receipts that has the actual name. I mentioned I could use a line or two to wake up. Senator Obama asked me if I was referring to Coke and I stated I was. After stating I was, Obama stated he could purchase cocaine for me and then made a telephone call. Senator Obama and I then departed the bar in my limousine and proceeded to an unknown location where Senator Obama exited the limousine with $250, which was provided to him by me. Returned a short while later with an eight ball of cocaine, which he gave to me. I did ingest a couple of lines of cocaine, and shortly thereafter, Senator Obama produced a glass cylinder pipe and packet of crack cocaine from his pocket. Obama then smoked the crack cocaine. I performed fellatio on Senator Obama in the limousine during the time Senator Obama was smoking crack cocaine after which I had the driver take me to my hotel, the Comfort Suites, Gurney, Illinois. The following day, November 7th, 1999, 
Senator Obama appeared at my hotel room, unannounced, uninvited, where we again ingested cocaine and I again performed fellatio on Senator Obama. No sooner was the meeting over than Sinclair was arrested and led away in handcuffs with no charges attached. An involvement of then-Senator Joe Biden surrounding the arrest was afterwards reported. Biden, it is alleged, informed authorities a few days before the press club meeting that Sinclair was a fugitive of justice. However, others see Sinclair's arrest as a miscarriage of justice, drawing the conclusion that Larry Sinclair became a political prisoner at the bidding of Obama operatives. But the real miscarriage here is Obama's claim that by supporting same-sex marriage, he is upholding the ideals on which our nation was founded. Not true. America's founding fathers upheld the role of the traditional family as the foundation of national morality. But surrounded by Jewish special advisors, radical socialist Valerie Jarrett, ad man David Axelrod, and Zionist show Joe Biden, Obama has toppled all that was left of our national morality by advocating in support of same-sex marriage the unnatural, unseemly, unchristian, deviant act of homosexuality. As D.V. Kidd puts it, there's nothing gay about men engaging in bowel movement sex in each other's rectums and feces who end up dying of AIDS. America is now in the throes of a spiritual crisis and it's going to take a whole different kind of leadership than what Obama or even Romney has to offer to bring health and healing to our fallen, morally wounded, leaderless nation.